How's it going everybody and welcome to today's video on the processes of bone remodeling. Bone exists in a constant tug of war between the production of new bone and the breakdown of old bone, with the production of new bone being referred to as ossification and the breakdown of older bone being known as resorption. We can also think of this as bone loss. Now there are several reasons why bone production or bone resorption could happen at any given time. Remember that bone cells are still cells and have a lifetime. They'll get older, eventually die, and they'll need replacing. But as we'll see as we move on, there's a blood calcium balance that also needs maintaining. And so if we look down to the bottom right of our slide, we see that it says that bone remodeling is controlled by parathyroid hormone, vitamin D, and calcitonin, two hormones and one vitamin. And this is actually the case, but what we're talking about specifically is the maintenance of that blood calcium balance. Now, I don't want you to worry about rushing to write these down just yet. I just want to touch on them to set a baseline. These are the important cells that we're going to discuss in a little bit more depth as we move on through this video on bone remodeling. So without further ado, the important cells for this topic are osteoprogenitor cells, osteoblasts, osteocytes, and osteoclasts. We'll go ahead and begin with the osteoprogenitor cells. And the reason that we're going to start with osteoprogenitor cells in particular is, as you'll see, as we move along through this topic, we're going to start to see a common trend across cells of less mature cells developing into more mature versions to complete more differentiated tasks, which is why osteoprogenitor cells are the perfect place to start because they are immature precursor cells that will go on to develop into a different type of cell, the osteoblast. And so after finding this out, it might be no surprise to hear that osteoprogenitor cells are actually stem cells. Now moving along to the product, the osteoblast. Here's where we actually start to see cells having their own differentiated functions. As osteoblasts are credited with being the cell type that builds new bone. And they'll go ahead and do this by secreting layers of proteins and utilizing the blood calcium balance that we were talking about before. If we need to build bones and we're activating these osteoblasts, then we're gonna be able to take calcium out of the blood to use in the construction of the bone. Now, osteoblasts are gonna go on to develop into a different cell called osteocytes in a very interesting way. And I'm gonna save that for a different slide. So for now, just know that we're going from osteoprogenitor cells or pre-osteoblasts into osteoblasts and eventually into osteocytes. Just so we have an understanding of what osteocytes are, before we move on to the next slide, you can think of them as more generalized bone cells responsible for maintaining bone. They're not going to be looking to break down or build up bone. So here's where it gets a little bit interesting. We're going to start to dip our toes into how the osteoblasts go ahead and build this new bone. They're going to do it by generating a couple of different products. One is an organic component of bone and one is an inorganic component of bone. The organic component is known as the osteoid. And osteoblasts are going to deposit this in a layer as they move along. And you can see that we have the osteoid layer visible right here with the osteoid itself containing proteins and collagen to give the bone tensile strength. And so this is the point where we can start to talk about how the osteoblasts turn into the osteocytes. As you can clearly see, we have a large organization of osteoblasts over here, and we have plenty of osteocytes over here. What's gonna start to happen is as the osteoblasts move across the bone and deposit this osteoid layer, they're actually gonna get caught up in the osteoid layer and get stuck there. And over time, they'll turn into the osteocytes. There is also an inorganic component of the bone produced by the osteoblast known as hydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite is formed of calcium, phosphorus, and water molecules and is credited with helping to provide bones their characteristic density. Now back to the different cell types. We know at this point that the osteocytes are those generalized bone cells. What we haven't yet discussed is that these osteocytes are what actually reside in the lacunae of the osteon. Recall from the prior video that the lacunae are the small pockets that exists between the cylindrical lamellae, which make up the osteon, which is the functional unit of cortical or compact bone. Now, the last crucial cell type to discuss for bone remodeling is the osteoclast. Much like the osteoblast, this is a specialized cell type with a differentiated function, and the function of the osteoclast is to break down the bone. The osteoclast is going to eat and cause resorption of the bone, releasing calcium into the bloodstream. Remember, this is the opposite of the osteoblasts. The osteoblast will take calcium out of the bloodstream in order to put into the new bone that it's building, and the osteoclast will break down the bone, releasing that stored calcium, enabling it to be free to enter the bloodstream. And it will also release a little bit of phosphate when it breaks down the bone as well. Now, what's interesting about these cells is that they're derived from monocytes. Monocytes are one of the categories of your body's white blood cells involved in your immune response. And in particular, when a foreign agent is detected in your body, monocytes will turn into macrophages, which are capable of breaking down those foreign entities. And so here we have our monocytes developing into specialized osteoclasts, and these osteoclasts will move along and create this resorption 
in the bone. What I'd also like you to appreciate is the osteocyte portion of this visual. Notice how on the outside we have a healthy lining of bone cells, and we also have a stable pocket of bone here filled with osteocytes, neither in the process of ossification or resorption. So now we've reached the part where we can start to discuss how vitamins and hormones control the amount of calcium that is free to either be stored in bone or flow through the blood. In terms of increasing blood calcium, we're going to be talking about the parathyroid gland. First, appropriately enough, is the parathyroid hormone. Now, now, if you've already gone ahead and watched the chapter on the endocrine system, parathyroid hormone and calcitonin, which is present on the next slide, are going to seem very familiar. If not, here's what you need to know about them in terms of bone remodeling. For the purposes of this conversation, parathyroid hormone is going to do two key things. It's first going to stimulate osteoclasts and depress osteoblasts. Why does this make sense if we're trying to increase blood calcium? The stimulation of the osteoclast is going to break down bone and release that calcium that's stored in the bone, freeing it up to enter the bloodstream. Equally important is the depressing of osteoblasts. If we have less functional osteoblasts, then we're taking less calcium out of the bloodstream to be stored in new bone. And so this is why, of course, parathyroid hormone is released in times of low blood calcium levels. Also relevant here is vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is going to kind of act by its own mechanism. It's going to instead seek to increase intestinal calcium absorption rather than targeting either the osteoclasts or the osteoblasts. But what's also interesting about vitamin D is that it enters a negative feedback loop relationship with parathyroid hormone. So as we release vitamin D, our intestinal absorption of calcium increases. We have a higher level of blood calcium. We have less of a need to shut down osteoblasts and stimulate osteoclasts, so parathyroid hormone will become inhibited at that point. Now to have the opposite effect, to decrease the blood calcium, we're going to be looking to use calcitonin, which comes from the thyroid gland, not the parathyroid. And calcitonin is going to have the exact opposite effect as parathyroid hormone. We're going to instead stimulate osteoblasts and depress osteoclasts. And this makes sense by the same logic. If we're trying to decrease blood calcium, then we're going to be looking to store that calcium in new bone, hence stimulating osteoblasts. Equally important is the depressing of osteoclasts, so we're not breaking down the bone we just made, releasing the calcium back into the blood. Now what's cool for us is the release of calcitonin and the creation of these circumstances gives a wonderful environment for bone growth. As now we have all of these osteoblasts stimulated and the osteoclasts are depressed, meaning that the osteoblasts are free to build bone uninterrupted and without competition from the resorbing osteoclasts. One more note to make is that it's the parafollicular tissue of the thyroid gland that's going to go ahead and release calcitonin. Now if you ever need help remembering what calcitonin does, just refer back to this little tool here. Here what we're really trying to do is emphasize the tone in calcitonin. And you can think of this in one of two ways. Either we're thinking of toning it down or toning down the calcium. Because of course calcitonin is looking to tone down the calcium in the blood. And here we have a visual that presents all of the relevant cells that we just discussed. If you'd like, go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can recall what each of these cell types does. And don't forget, you can always refer back to this slide in your studies. All right, so at this point, we can go ahead and do a mini quiz to see what you've learned. Which of the following cell types are the precursors to osteocytes? Go ahead and pause the video now. Take a moment and answer this question. Welcome back. The correct answer in this case is going to be answer choice D, osteoblasts. Remember, osteoblasts are a specialized type of cell with a differentiated function. They're responsible for building bone. But in the process of building bone, while they lay down the osteoid layer, they're going to get caught up and stuck in the osteoid and eventually form the osteocytes. It's not going to be answer choice A, osteoclasts. These are the cells responsible for breaking down or resorbing bone and are unfortunately not associated with the production of osteoclasts. Osteocytes. Monocytes are incorrect because those are the white blood cell category that go ahead and create osteoclasts. Answer choice C is actually pretty tricky, osteoprogenitor cells. The reason that it's tricky is that osteoprogenitor cells are the direct precursor to osteoblasts, which we know at this point is the precursor for osteocytes. But since we only get to choose one of these answer choices, osteoblasts is the best answer and osteoprogenitor cells would be more appropriate if we were asking about the precursor for osteoblasts. All right, this has been the video on bone remodeling. I hope you enjoyed and took something away from this video. If you have any questions for us, please feel free to reach out. But if not, happy studying.